Second John, verse number 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have brought, but that we receive a full reward. And what we've done, we've gone from rewards for Christians, for service, and we went into the judgment seat of Christ. We are up to lesson number 39. And we started the crowns. There are five of them. And we talked about the crown of glory last time. Now we're going to pick up the crown of rejoicing. And these are, this crown, these, this crown is for souls that are one for Jesus Christ. Now let me remind you. When I speak about souls being one for Jesus Christ. You don't necessarily have to be there present. Now Paul writes to us, he says, I have planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. I may hand somebody a gospel tract today, and they may read it, and that may be a seed planted in the ground. Five, ten years, fifteen years, if the Lord tarries, that person comes across another Christian and is witness to and the seed that has already been sown in the heart and by listening to this Christian or a pre or whatever. The fruits of the seed that I planted and the fruit of the watering that takes part that place and time. If they were to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, I have taken part. Send money off to a missionary. The fruits of the missionary are also accounted to you by what support you give to them. Somebody, you have the privilege of the Lord and the Holy Spirit to lead to Christ. You're not the only one who's ever dealt with that person. Now I know when I was saved in April, my grandma would say, we found this new church. There's this new church. Church was nothing to me. He was born somewhere to go to sleep. You know, I went to church just to shut her up. I've heard the message. Went to a couple messages. I felt something in my heart that it was lacking. I felt a fear of of dying. I asked my grandma, you know, what what can I do? Anything like that? She made arrangements with the church, and Joe Caswell met me on a Saturday at her house. He opened up the Bible with me, showed me what I needed to do, and I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, Joe Caswell being there as, my, as the witness of the Lord. Well, my grandma had part in it. She was there, too, when I received Christ as my Savior. But who knows if, you know, if my aunt was praying for me, who let, brought the family to this church. She might have been praying for my soul. She would have fruits by prayer. See, God's a holy and righteous God. Prayer, giving money, giving out gospel tracts are actually leading someone to the Lord. God will give you a reward. There's a place spoken about, I don't know if we'll get it, here that the wife will receive the fruits of her husband even if she stays home David went his troops he had to leave some troops behind they were just so tired and man, they couldn't go any further and they were just naturally fatigued when they went off to fight they came back those that were fatigued listen they tarried by the stuff they had their part no one wanted to give to him, but David said, no, no, listen, they've done their part. And they get part of the spoil. A wife that has to take care of her of the home and the children while the husband is knocking on doors, passing out gossip. You think God's not going to reward her for, making a, for preparing a meal for when he gets home? Taking care of the kids that they have? You think God's not going to reward with her by the fruit of her husband for souls? A missionary's wife that gives up all to follow her husband. You think there's not going to be a reward? 
I don't know how many gospel tracts I have handed out. From the time I was... Listen. The Sunday after the Saturday I received Christ as my Savior. I went to church Sunday morning and I told everyone that I had received Christ as my Savior in my grandma's house. Saturday. Sunday after church, I went home and witnessed to my dad. I had passed out gospel tracts. I had been part of door knocking, street ministry. I don't know how many gospel tracts I got saved. I, got people, I, I don't know how many gospel tracts I have given out to people. I don't even know if they got saved. I don't even know the ones who got saved. But there's a reward for the work. Listen, when a farmer plants seed in the ground, and he grows his crop, and he sells it off to the warehouse, and the warehouse sells it off to a store chain, and the store chain puts it in their store and you buy it, the farmer get, gets money, the warehouse gets money, the store gets money, and you get whatever you bought. And then you cook it up if it's food, and you serve it to your family, and you get part of the, of the pleas that you made a good meal. You're going to forget the farmer because you don't know who he is? So we're at the crown of rejoicing, and this is souls that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. It is not for a cult or religion, but for Jesus Christ. You can't say, oh, you know, I've been confirmed in this church, or I've been baptized in this church, or I've helped 4,000 old ladies across the street, and I'm going to get the crown and rejoice it. No. This crown is foundation upon the Lord Jesus Christ that you have received him as your Savior. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There is no name given by men whereby ye must be born again. You must be saved. Acts 4.12 It's not a work situation. It's not a salvation based upon what you have done because there's nothing you can do. Not of works, least any man should boast. For by grace are we saved through faith. Only Christians will be at the judgment seat of Christ. Only Christians will who have done the work of the gospel and nothing else. You lead to somebody into easy believism, you're not going to get this crown because they're probably not going to be saved. You have taken the gospel faithfully and righteously and wholly and brought it to lost people. And as a result, they come to Christ as their Savior crowd of rejoicing. Have you ever taken part of a soul that has come to Christ? Now, I've got to say, there has to be at least... Well, I've led two people at the church altar to the Lord. One, as far as I know, is a failure, and one, he's sticking to it. Gospel track. Has anybody ever, have I ever witnessed anybody being saved by a gospel tract? No. Were there anybody saved? I'd say at least one. In fact, I know one who sent me a letter. I got their name in my Bible for prayer. Who asked Christ to save him? I know another one who said his, right, his life got right, but all the other gospel tracts are for people who got saved. Were there any? Yes. Was I there? No. Do I lose out on the crown of rejoicing because I wasn't there? No. I get the same part. And as with the brother or the sister and the Lord that, that helped lead them, the ground was broken up, the seed that was planted in the watering, and God gave the increase. So guess what? For one soul, this crown could be given to at least two people. 
You witness to somebody's son. They go off. They get witness to or get wired to a church and they trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. All right? They go to a church service. The pastor preaches a message. The heart is churned. He gets down and asks Christ to say, God's going to reward the pastor. You think God's not going to reward bringing the person to the church? What about the person that gave him the track many, many years beforehand? What about the mother that may be praying for that child every day? Or aunt, brother, sister, somebody, wife. And so when you get these people in these churches, oh, we got 5,000 people. So you didn't do nothing. Here, here's a tomato seed. Bring me a tomato. Now, it don't work like that. Well, I have a garden of tomatoes and, and I produce 1,000 tomatoes. You produced? You picked. You put the seed in the ground. You weeded and watered. You didn't produce nothing. God did. Why aren't we giving God the credit? And with, with not giving God the credit, God gives us rewards as form as crowns for work that we're supposed to do. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel, but it's a free will that you don't have to do it, and God don't have to give you rewards. We are entrusted with the most life-giving, most promising ever, the King James Bible, to show man their eternal state. And we are given in the hands of the Word of God, not angels, to deliver the word, the word to the lost and dying world. But, oh well, I'm saved. Who cares? I'm happy. And when you stand in heaven, bald-headed with no crowns, And you don't have to be there. You can do it by mouth, prayer, tracts, missionary, support, prayer, etc. That hard? Is it so hard to hand a cashier a gospel track? Is it so hard to leave a gospel track in the bathroom stall of a public place that you just visited? Is it hard to leave a, a gospel track at a, at a payphone? Is it so hard to put ten dollars outside your, your your ties and offering? Is it hard to put ten dollars in the collection plate and write down a missionary? Is that hard? Sacrifice of time and effort. Oh, we'll give time to sports teams. We'll give time to television shows. We'll give times to uh, theater and academics and career. But we won't give God time and we won't give a lost and dying world time. We won't give money. <coughs> the easiest thing is to leave a gospel track or put $10 for a missionary. For the willing heart to serve God and to do right. Is that hard? If your church doesn't have evangelistic activities, get going yourself. Start one. Passing out tracks, door knocking, street ministry, calling people on the phone. Mailing tracks, like names in the phone book. I've done all that. In, in my life's work of ministry for I don't know how many years, when the postal service, their stamps were cheap, we would send out 20 letters out of the phone book before people got cell phones. When, you know, you can look at it, they had a home phone with an address and a telephone book. We would send gospel tracks to their home. 20 a week. You don't think that has fruit? 
You don't think there's any crown of rejoicing to come from that? Remember what we recap. Gold is done for Jesus Christ. When the fire is put, what is left behind? Not ashes. Gold. It's done for Jesus Christ. Silver. Witnessing to others. It doesn't have to, and it's nowhere in the Bible says it is to be successful. You're just told to go ye in all the world and preach the gospel and let God have the increase. Let God be in charge of it. And not all will be saved, for many will go the broad way into the, we, uh, for many will go into the broad way which leads to destruction. But few will go into the straight gate. It's not that they're going to get saved. Some will. Many and most will not. We get a re we get silver for trying. Are you trying? Will there be forget the gold, forget the, the crown of rejoicing? Will there be at least silver after everything is put to the test by your works in the judgment seat of Christ that you tried somehow, some way for a lost soul? And have you done it frequently? And frequently means somewhere the worker has to listen. You go fishing every day. Two hours fishing every day. For 40 years, you're going to catch something. Unless you're using totally the wrong bait. And you're not doing it like you're supposed to. You, you set to the fishing like you're supposed to, and where it is, the right bait, and everything like that. You will, even if it's not a keeper, you will catch something. And you can say, hey, I caught a fish. Back when my dad used to keep the boat, he'd give me a fishing rod to go fish. We'd catch these things called eels. Now, is it really a fish or is it a snake? And yet, there were some people that would take the eels and they, they loved them as a fool. Oh, I didn't catch a fish. I caught an eel today. Yeah, but it was to somebody's purpose and somebody's liking. And there were fish that we caught. I mean, you spend all day a whole thing of bait in, in the cunners. They're bony fish. But hey, you caught a fish. Have you read the parable of the sower and what kind of fruits he gets from his seeds? You can't earn if you don't try. And if you put effort and heart and prayer into trying and doing, you will get the precious stones which those will get saved, and you don't have to be there. God will give you a reward for effort. You may not see your effort. Especially this day and age. Especially this church age. Especially in the, in the economics of this world that we are in today. There are more for, God, for godlessness and Satan in the world and stupidity than they are for God in the Bible. you got Christians today who don't want anything to do with God in the Bible. You do not have to be there. Even with years down the road. There are stories of, of parents who have died and gone on before the Lord and years after their children got saved. There's been a friend of somebody who has witnessed to him, who's died and gone home to the Lord, and their funeral, the message preached at their funeral, their friend has come to know Christ, as they say. Now, you think God is so wrong and so harsh that, listen, just because you die, you, you lose that reward? I don't think so. I think Paul and John and James and all of them uh, are going to get many, many, many rewards. We still use Paul's writings. We use John's writings, the Gospel of John, to witness the lost people. I believe that John and Paul will still get rewards, even though they've been dead many years. I said last time, I and you, if you are a born-again Bible-believing Christian, you can trace somehow, I, you can't lay it out, but you can trace your salvation back to one of the eleven apostles. Peter, James, John, Paul, you can trace your salvation back to them. No, not name by name by name by name, but listen. 
They were the build up of the foundation of Lord Jesus Christ. And we all trace our, all our Christianity, all our salvation goes back to the foundation. We saw that of the Lord Jesus Christ that no other man can lay. That soul that comes to Christ, 1 Corinthians 3.6. 1 Corinthians 3.6. First Corinthians three six. Now he that let's start with verse five three five. Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe. Paul preached to them. Apollos taught some of them, and by their preaching, by their teaching, by their ministry, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as the Lord gave to every man, I have planted Apollo's word, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that waters, but God that gives. Listen, it's not you that saved them. You were just a vessel. You were the seed bag, or you were the water pot. God saves them, remember? God saved me. No man saved me. If a man saved me, I'm still in religion and I'm lost and dying going to hell. I'm saved by God through Jesus Christ, the gospel that Christ died for my sins, was buried according to scripture and arose again according to the scriptures. Men showed me the way, but God granted me the eternal life. Now he that planteth and he that waters are one. Look at that. How many people were involved with me getting saved through prayer, inviting out the church, and witnessing? At least two. Maybe three. Maybe four. What about those people? The Bible says they are one. They all took part. Paul and, and Apollos were one when it came to the Corinthians receiving Christ as their Savior where God saved them. Let's say a man, Joseph, his mother, the Bible believing Baptist church, she's saved. She prays for her son. Joseph works at a job. His co worker is saved. Goes to another Bible believing church. He's saved and is witnessing to Joe. The church is praying for Joe to get saved. Especially those that know his mother dear. And some that may even know Joe that are saved are praying for him. His co-workers working up, working with him, trying to get him to church, trying to get him to see. Joe won't listen. Joe meets a woman. She's saved. Joe loves her. She loves him. For his love for her, he comes close and gets interested in God. His co-worker comes up to him, and his mom is praying for him. He says, listen, will you come out to church? And he's like, you know what? Yeah, I will. The co-worker's pastor is praying and seeking God for the word and, and for the message for the upcoming Sunday. The Lord lays on his heart the message. Joe's mother's praying. His co-worker's now praying. His Girlfriend who, who, who can't marry him, according to scripture, because he's lost, but loves him, who's witnessing herself to him and trying, is praying. And those that are the inner circle of his mom at church and those at church and her, his mom's pastor. He's at another church now. And there are people in that church that are praying for the next Sunday service and that maybe a lost soul will come to church. Saturday, both churches send people out door knocking, send people out 
street ministry. They send people out passing out gospel tracts all week long. Joe steps in the in the in the foyer of the church and is looking for his co-worker friend. He meets and his co-worker friend introduces him to the pastor and people of the church and they sit down. They sing the hymns. The preacher preaches. The girlfriend is praying for him. The church there is praying for him. The church that Joe is in is praying for somebody in that church to receive Christ as their Savior. The pastor has been out for the Lord and seeking the Lord for somebody to get right. Joe's mother's in church praying. She's and the, the, the pastor's praying. The people are praying. The pastor preaches at the message where Joe is at this after this morning. Joe's heart is convicted. And at the moment of the invitation, Joe gets out of his pew, walks up to the pastor, and says, What must I do to be saved? And the Bible says that the angels rejoice because Joe has received Christ as his Savior. He asks for a phone at the church. He calls his mother and tells her, say, Mom, I'm saved. I have received Christ as my Savior. He calls up his girlfriend. We can get married now. I have received Christ as my Savior. Here's the pastor to tell you the truth. I am not lying to you. Joe's sins are under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is saved. Now, who got the crown of rejoicing for Joe? Unnumerable. The mother, the girlfriend, the co-worker, the three churches praying, the people praying for him. Now, Joe goes out. He's passing out tracts. He's doing the work of the Lord. Those people that witnessed Joe, those people that have been praying for Joe, are now getting Joe's fruits as he's going out doing something for the Lord. Joe goes on. He puts five dollars for one missionary. Some island nation he's never even heard of, but he, listen, tithe, he does tithe. Forget about tithe, but support a mission. Okay, five dollars to some island nation. I don't know. That, that missionary is over there supported by many people along with Joe to be there. Island people are getting saved. Who, who gets credit to that? The missionary. All the churches that are sending this missionary and supporting the missionary. All the people that are praying for this guy. Joe is now part of it. Joe's co-worker, his girlfriend, who now is his wife, his mother. And the three churches have been praying for Joe. That Joe is now giving $5 to this missionary. They're all taking part. You see how this crowd of rejoicing grows? People are getting saved. And Joe's mother was not there the day that Joe got saved. And Joe is not there in that island nation. He couldn't even find it on a map where islanders are getting saved. But he's getting he's been part. He's praying. He's paying. He's going out to others. A crown of rejoicing. He that planteth and he that watereth are one. You support a missionary, you are one with that missionary. And all the churches that send him out, and all the individuals that send him out, you're one in that nation. And you never met, you maybe never got an airplane, you maybe never got on a ship or a train or whatever you can travel. $5, $10, whatever you give from your heart from the Lord to a missionary work, you are one with that missionary. For whatever reason, you don't like door knocking. But you pray for them to go door knocking. You, you, you give to a church that buys gospel tracts to go out door knocking. You're not opposed to door knocking. You just is not your thing. Supporting the church and praying for those who do go out, you are one with those door knockers. I'm in a, I'm in a nursing home. I can't do nothing. I'm at a recovery center. Do I get my life back in order? I can't do nothing. Pray. If you got money, send it. But pray. Prayer can do much. 
And with prayer, you can be one. You think God is not going to give a reward to, to somebody who's been sitting in a nursing home bed for 30 years who can't do nothing all they do is pray? You think God's going to say, tough luck? Burn it? Wood, hay, or stubble? I don't think so. Witness to the nurses and to the doctors and to, and to the people that come in and clean your room. And, and witness to them. There is no excuse to witnessing. There is no excuse to say, why can't I get the crown of rejoicing? Every man shall receive his own reward. You're one, but you will get your reward. Your reward won't be shared with somebody else. According to his own labor. Now, the missionary is going to get a crown of glory we looked at last week. But there's many people who are giving money to him. Ten dollars in a prayer, you will get what you labored. Explain that. It's hard. Because God's a righteous and holy. And you know, a child's dollar can be worth more than someone's hundred dollars. If a child gives a dollar with all excitability, all for God to a missionary in his Sunday school class, he gives it to God and all, somebody just writes a check, 100 bucks, here you go. No prayer or anything like that. That child's going to get a reward a lot more than that $100 did. The widow that threw in her two mites got the Lord's recognition other than those that just cast their abundance. It's got to be with a heart attitude. It's got to be what you're doing. And listen, okay, here's $10 for a missionary, and I don't do anything myself. That's wrong. You're out there witnessing yourself. You're out there getting the gospel out yourself. And listen, that $10 to a missionary is an aid. It's an help. It's something more. It's my Jerusalem. It's my Samaria. It's my outer parts of the world. God will reward us according to our motive and why and our heart attitude. And it's not a dollar value. It is not, oh, I passed my 5,000 track. Now I'll go on to 10. It's not that. Listen, a Christian can get saved and give out two gospel tracts in his life with his heart and his motive right because he loves the Lord and die, and that's all he can do. And can earn more of a reward and more of a glory from the Lord than somebody who's been doing it for 40 years because they've been dragged through it, because they've been pleaded to do it, and they've been, oh, come on, please do it. When I first went to, to a, a Baptist church, it wasn't because I wanted to. It was to shut my grandmother up. I go door knocking because if I don't go door knocking, I'd be looked upon in church. Or my pastor keeps saying, so I'm just, just going to shut him up just to go. We got to just to go. That's not a reward. But if you go out witnessing and with your heart, and there are people who are lost and going to go to hell, there's somebody at work who has a crisis, and I can get tags for them, if I can do something to help them to come to Christ. That's more than say, well, here, here's a gospel track, because I have to. So I bear, and then, you, know, you know, there is an afterlife, and one day you're going to die, and you're going to face God. But you just take this and maybe one day God will have you open it and read it in the time of your life when you really need it. Someone comes to Christ and you've been part of the work. That's the crown of rejoicing. Somebody that you, again, God allows, they receive Christ there. With you a witness to it, you get the crown of rejoicing. But don't think you're the only one. 
And don't downplay somebody who's who can just praying. You know, our door knocking got five people saved over your street preaching. Our method got ten people saved, and you've just given gospel tracts to cashiers. You haven't got anybody saved. That's not it. That's not the proper mode. That ain't the heart attitude. That's flesh. That, that's that big thermometer. We're almost there to go. You know when a volcano gets that red up to then. The <laughs> okay. The crown of rejoicing. God credits all those that were involved with that saved soul. So if you use the Romans road or the Gospel of John, guess who's going to get credited? Paul, John. If you use 1 Peter, Peter. If you use Acts, Luke. If you happen to use Matthew, Matthew. Isaiah, if you use Isaiah 50, the one that wrote the book. How about somebody gives you a Bible? Whoever. Somebody goes up and gives you a King James Bible. And you use that Bible to witness to people who got saved. The person that gave you that Bible, Bible gets the credit too. Isn't God wonderful? Why do we get these, these rewards? It was all based upon Christ. Was not for Calvary, I'd be dying and going to hell and probably drinking beer and shooting drugs right now. The vile life that I lived before salvation. I didn't have a life. And the life that I hold today is Christ. My righteousness is Christ's righteousness. And with all he's done for me, he's given me the opportunity to earn crowns. It ought not be a free will to go out and tell people about Jesus Christ. It ought to be a demand, a command, thou shalt. But it's not. Everyone that walks away from the judgment seat of Christ is saved. And if you've just got a pile of ashes, you're still saved. You just love somebody more than Christ. That's wrong. Don't ever think that soul winning is not effortless. Don't lose his reward. Obtain the full reward. And we'll look at John again, but let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 19. Let's earn the full. Let's get the full crown of rejoicing. You know why I think it's called Crown of Rejoicing? This is what I think. Can you imagine the day the rapture of the church? And I, this is a story. I don't know if it's going to be so. But just think about it. If I'm wrong, I'll plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and be sorry. But just think about it. In glory, there you are. We're praising God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And a whole bunch of Christians come up and start hugging you. What's going on? First Thessalonians 2 19. Turn there. And I'm in second Thessalonians. Alright, here comes these people there. They're hugging you and they're kissing you. You never see them a day in your life. Oh, back off. What's going on? And this man walks up. Well, we're all going to be men. Missionary John. Well, how you doing? That's, these people around me, and they keep hugging me. What's the problem? And I'll, tell you what the, I'll tell you what it is, brother. What is it, John? Those are the people that 
I went to in Asia or Europe somewhere. And because of your money support and prayer for us, those are the people that got saved. That's why they're hugging and kissing you and loving you. Because you sent me to them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, wouldn't that be a crown of rejoicing that you took part in someone's salvation? And they're forever and ever eternally, once God, always God, sealed by the Holy Spirit, once saved, always saved, in glory, and not in hell. Wouldn't that be rejoicing before the Lord Jesus Christ? Wouldn't it be great for those people to drag those that, that support that missionary and say, Lord Jesus, this is the one that sent the man to us to teach us about you. Wasn't for these people. Again, wouldn't it be you, just you. It'd be people, Christians. Wouldn't these Christians, this Lord, just, they didn't pay for this man. He would never come to, and we would have died and gone to hell. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. What is our hope? Titus says, our blessed hope is a great Lord Jesus Christ, a great God. That's my blessed hope for the Lord to come. But what is my, our hope? What do you hope? If I were to ask you right now, what do you hope for? Watch this. What is our hope or joy? What is your joy? Or crown of rejoicing. Hope, joy, crown of rejoicing. Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy to those who will be raptured, those who are Christians, those who will be before Jesus Christ. You are our hope. You are our joy. You are the crown of rejoicing. As much as you joy for a birth of a newborn baby, you ought to have that joy for a Christian, for a lost man to come to Christ as their Savior. That to be the joy. And your hope for those to be turned to Christ for their salvation. That is to be your hope. That is to be your joy when someone does get saved. And crown of rejoicing. That is your glory. Not no football team. Not no baseball team. Not no stupid movie. But joy in those that got saved. Now, back to Second John, and we're done. Verse eight. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought. Your work. But that we receive a full reward. Receive the full crown of rejoicing. Receive the full credit in your part for people to come to Christ as their Savior. Come to know that. And lose it now. Don't do a Demas. Don't go back into the world. Do a Paul. Go for the full mark. Go to the, to the death. Go to the departure gate. And depart with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all going to have works that burn. We're all going to have dust. We're all going to have ashes. We all got wood, hay, and stubble. But don't lose the crown of rejoicing. Keep going. Keep working. Keep seeking. Keep doing. Go ye. Go ye. In all the world. Preach the gospel. That's a command, but yet it's free will. You don't have to, but I say you ought to.